What's up everybody, Gundam Flexing here. In this video, I'll be showing y'all how to use Photoshop to improve your overall Gunpla photos. This is a very basic and easy tutorial which will make your final products pop out more with better colors, details, and vibrance. Before we begin, it's important to note that the first thing you can control when taking a picture is the lighting. In this example of my high-grade Barbatos from Iron-Blooded Orphans, I'm using the natural sunlight from outside, as well as the lights in my room. You want to be sure you're taking your photos in proper lighting, which will not only help you when you're doing this in Photoshop, but will also ensure you're taking clearer photos for others to enjoy. This picture was taken off my iPhone 10, and although it is a great piece of technology, it may not have comparable specs and results from professional-grade cameras, which could cost thousands of dollars. So. To make up for this difference, we're going to use Photoshop to improve this image the best we can. And the first step we're going to do is we're going to separate the background from our main event, Barbatos. And how we're going to do this is, with the mouse, you're going to go to the far left side, and under the lasso tool, we're going to make that selection, and you're going to select Quick Selection Tool. Now your Quick Selection Tool can be modified to uh, larger or smaller. Uh, I prefer to do as small as possible, almost where I could barely see the mouse, and the reason being is because the larger you go, the more of the background you might accidentally add. So about this size, and I already have my quick selection selected, I'm just going to hold the mouse and drag it across Barbatos. And our purpose here is just so we can select Barbatos and separate him from the background, which is uh, my wallpaper basically. And as we're going to Barbatos around, we may grab a little bit too much or a little bit too less. Uh, we may even grab the background by accident, which is fine because we're going to go over that and deselect it later. But right now, we're just going to select the most we can. And to include his sword, this. Excellent. Now, you can see that we also grabbed quite a bit of the background underneath his right arm underneath his left arm and in between the legs, which is an easy fix. So all you have to do is hold the Alt key on your keyboard and you'll notice if I bring up the brush, you'll notice that the brush got larger and it has a plus. If we hold Alt, that will become a minus. So bringing this back to its normal size, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to select the background which we want to deselect. And essentially anywhere that shows a background, we're going to deselect it. We're going to work between the legs. I'm also going to deselect the stand. And I'm going to work underneath his left arms. We have it. And if we grab, if we deselect too much, it's fine. You could just let go of the Alt key and then go over the piece. We grab the bit too much right here so we're going to deselect that. We're going to deselect the background we see underneath his yellow horns and of course we're going to go back over to select more of his horns. And that's essentially it. I have a little bit of space there underneath his abdominal and I think we're good. I'm going to just go over everything one last time and give it a quick look. Make sure we have all the colors we want selected. We have the entire Barbados selected as well. And we got rid of most of the background we can. I think we're good. So now with everything selected and or deselected, we're going to right click our Barbados and we're going to select layer via copy. And you'll notice on the right side, we just made a layer of our selection. So it's pretty much Barbados minus the background. First thing I usually like to do after I make this step is I go on to uh, blur my background and light it up. So I'm going to select my background, which is now VL Snap. I'm going to go to the bottom where it has a circle. I'm going to select the circle. I'm going to select curves. From here, I'm going to make the selection at the bottom left where it has a box and an arrow pointing down. That way, it'll only affect the background. So I'm going to select that. For curves, at the top right, I'm going to select that little knob, and as you can see, as I drag the knob farther to the left, the background, everything but Barbatos gets highlighted, or gets lighter. So I'm going to drag it somewhere in the middle. You don't want it too bright or look unnatural, so maybe around here looks fine to me. 
And I'm going to, with the mouse, select the bottom left quadrant. And when you select it, a little dot will appear. And I'm going to move that dot with my keyboard, my arrow keyboard. And I'm just going to move it top left just a little bit to whiten out the area at the bottom left. With that, I'm going to hit X. And now I'm going to select the background again, and I'm going to blur it just a little bit. Uh, and the reason being is because I want my main traction, Barbatos, to pop out just a little bit more. So whenever you blur things in the background, everything in the foreground stands out a lot better. So with this, I'm going to select Filter. I'm going to select Blur. I'm going to select Gaussian Blur. And mine is already set at 0.5. And you'll notice the, more, the bigger the radius, the, the blurrier the background is. And obviously this is an absolutely unnatural. And that's not what I'm trying to aim for, uh, not for this project. So I'm going to move my radius down to a 0.5. Uh, my recommendation is try 0.5 to 1.5. Once I have it, I'm going to hit OK. So you can tell now my background is much lighter. But it is a little bit off because the background is lighter, but our Barbatos, if the light is reflecting correctly, is a little bit too dark. So we're going to repeat the same steps we did at the bottom, but just time for Barbatos. So we're going to select the Barbatos layer, layer 1. We're going to hit the circle at the bottom. We're going to select Curves. And again, we want this selection here to be selected, uh, the box with the triangle pointing down, affecting only this layer. We're going to grab our top right, and we're going to just drag it across the left. And you can see, the farther left we drag it, the lighter he becomes. Now obviously, this is a very unnatural color, but just to prove a point. Again, I don't want my guy to be too light, so I'm going to leave it somewhere around here. And I'm going to select the bottom left quadrant, select it, a little knot will appear. I'm going to use my keyboard, and I'm going to move somewhere around here to the top left. I think that's good. Now I'm hit. X to exit out. As you can see, our Barbatos picture is much lighter, uh, not dark. Now again, I'm going to select layer, and this is the step where we're going to make the colors more vibrant. We're, with our layer selected, we're going to go back to the bottom, select the circle. We're going to select hue and saturation. You want to ensure this little box here is selected for the same reason as the curves. And with that, we're going to select this hand with the two arrows pointing in opposite direction. And essentially, whenever we edit a color on our Barbatos, for example, blue, we're going to affect all the colors in that scheme, so all the blue scheme. And I think Barbatos is a perfect example for this tutorial because he has red, blue, yellow, and gray. So blue is going to be our first color we're going to edit. You'll notice that the mouse cursor turns into an eyedropper as soon as it touches the image. And whenever we hold down our mouse, it'll turn into a hand with arrows pointing in opposite direction. And essentially, we're affecting our saturation. So if we were to hold down the mouse, select the color you wanted, and you drag to the right, you'll notice that the saturation is increasing. And if you make it to the left, you notice that the saturation is decreasing with almost to pretty much taking out your colors. So for this example, I'm going to do blue, I'm going to hold down the mouse, and I'm going to increase it to roughly around, let's say about 25 looks good. And again, all the blue in this image is improved. And now I'm going to do the same thing for yellow. I'm going to select yellow, hold down the mouse, and I'm going to move it to the right, maybe to 25 as well. We're going to do that to red. We're going to select red, hold down the mouse, and drag it to roughly around 25. You can even do it to the gray to an extent. Uh, you can select the gray and move it like up to 30 or something, but it also affects the other colors such as red. And I'm also going to select his green eyes, and I'm going to increase that color to maybe 20. Around 20 looks good. And then foil stickers right here on his left shoulder, his right shoulder, uh, we could select that color. Hold it down and increase it to 35. And you'll notice that it's, when I did that, it also affected the red, and that's because those colors are very similar, which is not a problem because what we're going to do next is we're going to make the tinfoil stickers uh, pop out even more without affecting the other colors. But now we're done with the hue and saturation, and as you could tell, Barbatos, the colors on it is much more vibrant. Now we could exit out of this 
and hit X. And sometimes this is what I like to do, and this isn't part of the tutorial, but if I go back and select my layer, I want to, in certain cases, make, his, make this image a little more sharp. And how we're going to do that is once you select your layer, you could go to Filter, you could go to Sharpen, and you go to Smart Sharpen. Now, Smart Sharpen pretty much affects the, the details, and the best that I could tell is the edges around your model. This is my custom presets right here, and you can pause the video and look at it, and you can mess around with it as you'd like. But with my custom presets already in, I'd like to hit OK and then continue. Now again, going back to where I was stating, we're going to affect the colors of the tinfoil stickers on his shoulder here, his right shoulder, and of course his center of his chest, and the green tinfoil for his eyes. So we're going to make sure with our layer selected, we are going to go over here where it says quick selection tool again. We're going to select our quick selection tool and this is the part where you want your brush to be very very small so you're going to select the left bracket. Remember right bracket is to increase the size of the brush, left bracket is to decrease the size and you want a very small brush size because this is a very thin strip. So with our brush size selected we are going to hold down the mouse and just follow the image all the way around. Now you'll notice we grabbed too much, we grabbed the white, it's okay. Hold down Alt and we could pretty much deselect all that. And we're going to repeat it for this side. We're going to hold down the mouse, go across and select the uh, sticker. However we grabbed too much so hold down Alt and deselect the white. There we have it. And then we're going to zoom in in order to get a accurate capture of the little emblem on the center of his chest. And to zoom in, we're going to hold control plus sign. And we are zoomed in. And I'm going to decrease my brush size just a little bit more, maybe to the size of the strip by using the left bracket. And now I'm going to select the yellow, or excuse me, the pink stick or the pink sticker, pink strip. Okay, we may have selected a bit too much, so I'm going to try to clean it up. I'm going to try to capture this as accurately as possible, and I think this is good. So we're going to zoom all the way out by holding Control plus. Um, yeah, Control plus is to zoom in. Control minus is to zoom out. And now we have our strips selected, our tinfoil sticker selected. From here, we're going to go to the top left where it says Layer. We're going to go to New Fill Layer. We're going to select Solid Color, we're going to hit OK, and you can tell that it'll change the solid color to pretty much whatever color we want. So if you wanted dark red, you could go with dark red. If you wanted baby blue, you could do that, neon green. But because the original image was pink, we're going to stick with like violent pink right here. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice the colors are just way too strong. So we're going to ensure that we have that layer selected, which is to our right. We're going to hit this button here where it says normal, and we're going to go to soft light. Boom. As you can tell, it really decreased the uh, color, but it's still enough where it looks good. Now, if it's too much for you, you're able to change the opacity. So if you think the color is too strong, you can change the opacity to 50 and just go from there. And you'll see the difference because right now if we were to deselect this and not show this layer, the color looks a little dull. But if we select it, it looks a little bit brighter. So with that, I'm going to change the opacity maybe to 90. There we go. And the same technique is going to apply, be applied for his eyes. We're going to go back to the right side. We're going to ensure the layer is selected. And then we're going to, with our click selection tool at the far left, Sure, that's selected. Because his eyes are really small, we could zoom in, control plus, control plus. Now you could select his eyes. Of course, we grab too much, it's okay. Hold down Alt, and with the mouse, you just get rid of all the areas which is not considered his eyes. Because his eyes are pretty small, it may take you a couple of races, a couple of tries. There you go. I think I have a pretty good selection. I'm going to zoom out by holding control minus. 
So with this eyes selected, I'm going to go to the top left. I'm going to select layer. I'm going to select new fill layer, solid color. I'm going to hit OK. Neon green is already selected. I'm going to hit OK. You can tell, again, the green is pretty awesome looking, but it's just too much for me. So with that layer selected, the neon green, I'm going to go select normal and select soft light. And there we have it, guys. This is the high-grade Barbatos. And as you could tell, the colors are much richer. Uh, he's much brighter. The room is a little bit too dark, and we fixed that. So Photoshop is a very powerful tool. And the reason why I call this a beginner's uh, Photoshop tutorial for Gunplow guys is because... Uh, Quite frankly, I am still a very beginner uh, Photoshop user. I am by no means even close to an intermediate. But these techniques are something you could use, and if you get into the habit, you could start finishing products in like less than 15 minutes. And Photoshop, again, is incredibly powerful. Highly recommend it. If you don't have Photoshop or you can't afford one at the time, you're able to Google uh, Photoshop open sources, and there are applications out there for free, whether it's web-based browser or an actual application that you could download. Well, guys, that's all I have for this video. I hope it will improve your Photoshop skills and your Gunpla photography. If you have any questions or comments, please post it down in the section below. As always, I appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.